This is the going further section at the end of 6.1, 6.1e. We're going to be applying properties to algebraic expressions. Using properties of operations can help us avoid errors when simplifying. We can justify each step in this expression 5x minus 4 times 3x minus 6 minus x plus 5. First thing we do is distributive property. We have a negative 4 times a positive 3x. That gives us a negative 12x. We have a negative 4 times a negative 6. That gives us a positive 24. Now we need to distribute this minus sign, this negative sign, to the x plus 5 in the parentheses. Remember, there's like an invisible 1 here that'll help us. We can think negative 1 times x. That's going to give us a negative x. And negative 1 times a positive 5 is going to give us a negative 5, a minus 5. Now, because we have all these subtraction symbols, these negative symbols, we need to add the opposite to set up to use the commutative property because it won't work with subtraction. So instead of minus 12x, we have plus negative 12x. Instead of minus x, we have plus negative x. And instead of minus 5, we have plus negative 5. Now we can use the commutative property to rearrange the terms. We move the negative x over here and the positive 24 over here. Now. If we move the negative x here, we can group these terms with the x variable and we can combine them. 5x plus a negative 12x plus a negative x gives us a negative 8x. Now we have a positive 24 plus a negative 5. That's going to give us negative 8x plus 19 when we combine like terms. Now remember, when adding unlike signs, we find the difference of their absolute values and use the sign of the add-in with the greater absolute value. So if we have 24 plus a negative 5, the absolute value of 24 is 24, and the absolute value of negative 5 is 5, so we have 24 minus 5. That's 19. This positive 24 has a greater absolute value, so we have a positive 19. Remember, the inverse property of addition helps us create zero pairs. If we have negative 6 and 1 fourth plus 6 and 1 fourth, it's going to equal zero because negative 6 and 1 fourth is the additive inverse of a positive 6 and 1 fourth and vice versa. Together, they're going to equal zero. Remember, when we see a lone negative sign to the left of the parentheses, we can imagine that it's negative 1 to distribute the negative into the parentheses, we'd have a negative 1 times x, that's a negative x, and a negative 1 times a positive 5, that's a negative 5. And when adding terms, we can imagine there's a 1 as the coefficient of a lone variable. If we have 5x plus a negative 12x plus a negative x, we can imagine it as an adding a negative 1x. And the coefficient of x is negative 1. We can use the distributive property to factor a linear expression such as 20x minus 28. To factor it completely, we use the greatest common factor of the coefficient of the variable and the constant. And the factors of 20, that's the coefficient of the variable x, are 1 times 20, 2 times 10, and 4 times 5. And the factors of 28 are 1 times 28, 2 times 14, and 4 times 7. So 4 is the greatest common factor, the GCF. Now we factor out the GCF. We're going to factor out the 4. We have a 20x minus 28. Well, there's 4 times something for each of these. We could do 4 times 5x minus 4 times 7. And since we're using 4 for both of these, we can just pull the 4 and put it over here and do 5x minus 7 inside the parentheses. And we've factored it completely. Remember, the commutative property does not work with subtraction, so we must rewrite the expression as adding the opposite. When we see this minus 12x, we change it to a plus negative 12x. When we see the negative x, we change it to a plus 
negative x. When we see the minus 5, we change it to a plus negative 5. Now we can use the commutative property to swap the places here so that the negative x is with the other x terms and we can combine them and the 24 is with this other constant, the negative 5. We group the like terms with the associative property. For this triangle, we're going to find the length of this indicated side. But before we do that, I'm going to show you how to do this without variables. So I want you to imagine that this side of the triangle is 8 centimeters plus 2 centimeters, and this side of the triangle is 5 centimeters plus 3 centimeters. We don't know what this side is, but it's telling us that the entire perimeter, all three sides, is 34 centimeters. Well, then we know that 34 centimeters is going to equal 8 plus 2 plus 5 plus 3 plus the unknown amount. And if we subtract this plus this from the 34 centimeters, we'll find the value of the question mark. 8 plus 2 is 10, plus 5 is 15, plus 3 more is 18. That means we have 34 is equal to 18 plus some unknown amount. Well, if we subtract 18 from the 34, we'll know that the value of the question mark must be 16. This side must be 16 centimeters. And we can actually do 34 is equal to 18 plus some unknown amount. Usually in algebra, this would be another variable like a y or a p or a q or something like that. We subtract the 18 from both sides of the equation. This side makes a zero pair and we get rid of it. And this side is 16. We only have a question mark left on this side. So we know the value of that question mark is 16. Now, if you understand how we did this, let's do it with the variable. We have 3x plus 6 and an x plus 5, and we don't know the value of this question mark. It's telling us the perimeter of the triangle is given. It's 9x. We need to find the length of this indicated side. We know if we put this plus this together and subtract it from the 9x, we'll find out what the value of the question mark is. So, we have 9x is equal to 3x plus 6 plus x plus 5 plus whatever the question mark is. So, we can actually say that 9x minus this part of the expression is going to equal the question mark. So, the question mark is equal to 9x. We have to distribute this negative sign. So we have negative 1 times 4x, that's going to give us a negative 4x, and a negative 1 times a positive 11, that's going to give us a negative 11. So 9x minus 4x is 5x, and we're left with 5x minus 11 is the question mark. This is 5x minus 11. So now we need to find what the value of this question mark is for this rectangle. So first let me show you how we're going to do it if there were no variables. Here we have a rectangle and it said this side is 7 minus 2. And we know that to find the perimeter of a rectangle, it's 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. Whatever this length is, is the same as this one. So this one is also 7 minus 2. Whatever the length of this one is, is going to be the length of this one. Well, then we know that the 2 times the width is going to be 2 times 7 minus 2. We just don't know what 2 times the length is. It's telling us the perimeter is 30 centimeters. If we subtract this part from the 30, then we'll be left with 2 times whatever the question mark is. We have 2 times the question mark is equal to 30 minus 2 times 7 minus 2. That's 30 minus negative 2 times a 7 is a negative 14. Negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4. And 30 minus 14 plus 4 is 20. Now, 
That's two times the question mark. We only need one question mark. So if we divide by two, we'll get the value of one length. If we only want one question mark, we can just divide this by two because this is two question marks. That means this question mark has the value of 10. So let's try it with a variable. We know the perimeter of a rectangle is 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. And it's telling us that this side is 2x minus 2. Well, then that means this side must be 2x minus 2 also. We need to find the length of this one side. It's telling us the perimeter is equal to 12x plus 8. Well, that means this entire perimeter is 12x plus 8, and that would be equal to whatever 2 times this length is plus 2 times the width, which is 2 times 2x minus 2. We can use the distributive property and do negative 2 times positive 2x is a negative 4x, and negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4. That means whatever 2 times this length is, is equal to 12x plus 8 minus 4x plus 4. Now, we want this 4x to be next to this 12x. So we can add the opposite to use the commutative property. Instead of minus 4x, we have plus negative 4x. And we rearrange it to over here and put this 8 over here with the commutative property and use the associative property to group them together. We have a 12x plus a negative 4x. Well, that's 8x. We have an 8x plus 12. But we're not done. This is for two question marks, the top and the bottom. We only need the top. So we need to divide this by 2. If we divide it by 2, we'll find one length. So one question mark is equal to 8x plus 12 divided by 2. We can actually write it like this. And 8x divided by 2 is 4x, and 12 divided by 2 is 6. We know that one length is equal to 4x plus 6. Now I know this can be very confusing. If it is, give it a chance and try going back to watch it from the beginning where I was doing it with no variable, and then watch this part again with the variable. We finished lesson 6.1. We're going to move on to 6.2, which is about one-step equations with rational coefficients, and 6.2a is one-step equations. What will really help you is knowing your properties, knowing the distributive property and the commutative and associative property knowing your inverse property of addition, and knowing how to use them. I hope the rest of your day is wonderful, and I hope you join me for our next lesson. Bye.